fact, let's also talk about the new listing, which was actually pretty good. And I'm talking about Blue Jet, uh, Blue Jet Healthcare. Now, this one listed at around 380 rupees a piece. The issue price was around 346. So, to discuss the plans after listing and lots more, we're joined by the team. Shivain Arora is managing director of the company, as well as VK Singh, the CEO of Blue Jet Healthcare. Join us now to take some questions, gentlemen. Good morning, and congratulations on what has been a good listing on the exchanges. Uh, Shivain, let me come to you first. We did have you on the channel just around a week ago, you know, when the IPO did open and we were talking to you. Of course, we couldn't get too much in terms of the numbers. Now that the company is listed, tell us, uh, you know, where do you see the growth really going? In, say, in a couple of years, how much do you think the potential is for your own company to grow? Firstly, thanks for having us and uh, thanks to all the investors for believing in us in terms of showing such good response despite the current market conditions. Um, I think uh, the business uh, is pretty much intact and what we've discussed a uh, few weeks back, I think uh, that's, that's the thought process in terms of increasing and growing the business uh, in all the three verticals, that is contrast media intermediates, pharma intermediates and uh, the third one, high intensity sweeteners. So in contrast media, which is your biggest, you know, part, it is around 70% of your total. What is the kind of growth that you can expect, say, in the next one year? So we are seeing traction in terms of the molecules that we are supplying. I think uh, it's uh, needless to say, but the customers that we deal with have been doing imaging for the past 50 to 100 years. And uh, in some of the cases, we are part of um, newer launches. Uh, these are next-gen uh, diagnostic uh, uh, candidates and uh, these could be a positive game, ch game changer when it comes to the credibility of imaging. And uh, so working with the global leaders for not only their old molecules but also the newer innovations helps us to be in a very good position going forward. Okay. Um, so, Shivain, just one follow-up question. Contrast Media has been seeing a revenue growth of about 20% for the last couple of years. That's the revenue CAGR for contrast media. Now that you're also focusing in on more innovative products and catering to the innovative needs of your large customers, what can the revenue run rate be going ahead? Can it be more than 20% that you've clocked in so far? And who would be your key clients over here? The key clients right now would be the, the global leaders in imaging. I mean, the four players that, con that continue to hold more than 75% of the global market share. And uh, we see an increased off-take requirement from them because we receive a 12 to 18 month binding forecast. And in some cases, these are long-term supply agreements that have been signed off starting uh, this particular quarter. So we see a solid ramp up happening in this particular segment. So the revenue CAGR going forward for Contrast Media, what could it be? That, that you're seeing higher off-take, you said. I I would not be able to paint a picture on that at this point in time, but we are very excited about this segment because it's fairly unique. Mm. Okay. Uh, so, Shivan, let me ask you a slightly wider question on this. Good morning. Uh, you have Contrast Media, which is the bulk of your business, obviously. Then there is uh, the artificial sweeteners business, and you also have pharma intermediaries, intermediaries, which is a very small part of the business right now, I believe just about 5%. Give us a sense of your targeted aspirational revenue mix, the revenue pie, how you would want it to be, say, a year or two down the line. See, I think uh, the core of the business is contrast media. Uh, I think it's still uh, going forward. Uh, the product mix would be contrast media heavy, followed by pharma intermediates because some of the few candidates that we were tracking are very well positioned in terms of being at par with the high intensity sweetener business that we have. I feel uh, some of the candidates that we were tracking are very credible in nature and uh, gaining traction in the end formulation market. Uh, so having said that, contrast media heavy and very good balance between pharma intermediates and uh, high intensity sweeteners going forward. Okay, okay, that's interesting. So that means your uh, pharma intermediary business should see uh, greater growth going forward. Uh, let me bring in Mr. Vika Singh as well. Mr. Singh, can you elaborate a little more on this in terms of the growth rates that uh, pharma intermediaries will see uh, and also just how, you know, your place with respect to cash on the books right now because this IPO wasn't meant to bring in any cash in the company. I think it was entirely an OFS. Uh, so what are the cash levels? How much debt do you have? And how much money, how much cash would you put to work uh, in the next uh, one year or so in terms of CapEx, any other cash utilization plans? 
Firstly, thank you for roasting us, and I think today we have made a great debut on the market. Uh, as far as the third vertical, that's uh, pharma intermediates, is concerned, uh, that's relatively small today, but then a lot of incubation happened three or four years back. And that's a pure play, you know, CDMO type of model, where we work with the innovator companies. And as a strategy, as an overall philosophy for the company, uh, the way we choose our segments and the way we do our molecule selection, we're very clear that we do not want to, you know, be abundant in the generic space. So we try and stay clear of generic type of competition where there's a lot of price elasticity. So given the traction that we are getting in uh, the pharma intermediate business because of some customer lock-ins and signed contracts and the chronic therapy that we are chasing, we foresee uh, very good growth in this, uh, uh, in this segment. Okay, and uh, just the second point on cash. In terms of... Uh... Uh, yes, Shivan, go as ahead. As far as the cash is concerned, you know, we don't have any debt. We, we don't have any debt on the balance sheet. We are a debt-free company. Uh, we have very good, uh, you know, free cash flows. Uh, I think 30, as of 31st of March, uh, what we have filed in the RHP, I think we were sitting on uh, uh, 260 or 270 crore of cash. So uh, while, uh, you know, as far as uh, this particular issue is concerned, we are not getting anything into the company, but then we don't need for the moment and all the expansion plans that we are, uh, you, you know, we have for the next 18 to 24 months will get very easily fulfilled from the internal accruals. So uh, we are adding about 50% <coughs> more capacity in, uh, from the existing levels of 1,000 KL in the next 24 months. So it's a very aggressive cap CAPEX plan, CAPEX cycle we are in today. Got it. And this will be funded completely through internal accruals. Okay, so no need for cash, and the company's capacity is going up by close to about 50%. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for uh, joining in. Congratulations on a steady, strong listing. Look forward to more conversations with you through the course of your journey as a publicly listed company now. We will slip into a very short break. On the